In this video, you and I get to build and test SSL VPN connection on the FortiGate firewall. We're going to be using Active Directory to authenticate our remote users. So there are a couple of moving parts. So let's start step by step and then we'll keep refer uh, referencing this diagram as we go along. The first thing being setting up the interfaces and testing um, reachability um, to our internal applications as well as out to the internet. So according to our diagram, our internet interface is going to be called INET and it has an IP 172.16.15.2. INET 172.16.15.2. It's a slash 24. I'm going to allow ping and HTTPS. And then now we move on to the second interface, which is our DMZ interface. It's in uh, subnet 25. I'm going to call that DMZ 172.16.25.1 also slash 24. The last interface is our LAN interface, subnet 30. I'll call this LAN 30. Also allowing HTTPS and ping. And because we said that this is our WAN interface, our default gateway is 15.2, um, 15.1. Uh, and now we can actually test the reachability to the internet. And that works. So now let's handle our name resolution. And um, with that, we're going to be using our Active Directory, our domain controller, which is also our DNS server. So we're going to point our DNS services to 172.16.25.254. We don't have a secondary DNS server, so I'm going to leave that blank. And then local domain name. With DNS, I'm going to disable DNS over TLS and enable DNS over UDP port 53. Now we can test the host name of our uh, domain controller is uh, DC01. Okay, that works, but we won't be able to test anything further because we're still setting up our firewall. If we are using our domain controller for internet access, we need to make sure that our domain controller itself has internet connectivity. So I'm going to close out of this. So now we have name resolution and we've configured our interfaces. The next thing is to handle time, the NTP. Go to system, settings, and we don't want to be a local NTP server, and I'm gonna click on okay. So now we've taken care of DNS, NTP, and we've addressed the interfaces. Now let's do our Active Directory integration. we we'll go to user and authentication, LDAP service, we set the name of our server as DC01, dc01.staticroute.io. And then the bind type, we regular, static route. Um, Picard is one of the users on our Active Directory. I'm actually a member of a, a group called Captains. This is the group that we're gonna be testing with. The connection is successful. Let's select the the root of our Active Directory. Oh, and I want to change the common name identifier from CN to SEM account name. And I click on OK. Let's go back. So the integration needs to be secure, but in order for us to do that, we we're going to need. Um, to do some basic cert, uh, certificate management. So I'm going to leave this and instead go directly to the domain controller. So now I'm on the domain controller and let's start with the certificate management here. What I want to do is go to system, certificates, and we're going to generate a new certificate signing request from the firewall. I'm just going to call this firewall01 and that's also going to be the host name firewall01.staticroute.io 
I'll copy that because I'm going to use it at a later stage. Organizational unit, say IT. The organization is static route. I'm going to leave everything the way it is. I'm not gonna populate all of these fields except for the subject alternative name as well as the password to protect the private key. All right, we have our CSR. I'm going to download a copy of that. Here's our CSR. I'm gonna copy the contents and paste. Request the certificate. Advanced certificate request. And then we paste the CSR here. And the certificate template we want is web server. Our CA is going to issue the certificate immediately. So we'll just download it. In base64 encoded format, download certificate. I'm going to rename the certificate because this is the firewall certificate. So we need to know what it is. Firewall 01. Next, we download the CA certificate. Also in base64, download CA certificate. There it is, and then we rename this to DC01. So we have everything we need. Let's go back to the FortiGate. First, I want to upload the CA certificate. It's a file. And double click on that. And it says the certificate has been uploaded. If we scroll down, we can see the certificate is there. The name is not exactly intuitive, so let's rename it. So we'll rename CA Cert 1 to DC 01 CA. And now if you refresh the page, you'll see now the certificate name makes sense. The next thing I want to do is upload the certificate itself. Import certificate. That's for firewall one. There we have our certificate and it is valid. Our CA, it's also valid. Now we can go back and finish the LDAP integration. Make sure that we turn on security on it. LDAP servers. We want this to be a secure connection using LDAP S and we're going to reference the certificate of our CA. All right, everything tests successfully. The server identity check, this essentially says the host name and the IP address in the certificate, they must match. Oh, and while we're here, let's test the members of our Active Directory, um, the group that I created, captains. So we have a couple of names in there. First one being Picard, like Captain Jean-Luc Picard test and this this looks like it's successful and then Janeway successful Acha and that's successful so we know that we can um, safely use those names for testing our VPN now let's go on to the VPN itself and start with maybe the portals oh uh, before we do we need to define the the users uh, the remote users and we need to go back to user and authentication and define user group that we're going to map to the remote group on active directory we'll call that sr remote the remote group is going to be captains on our ldap server and there's the group captains select And now going back to the VPN, let's start with the portals. I'm going to delete this portal. We're not going to use it. We'll mainly work with just one portal, to be honest. And I'm just going to name it SR Remote. And on here, 
we want to enable tunnel mode and we also want to enable web mode so with tunnel mode will enable um, split tunneling and when users authenticate they get allocated an IP address so by default there's a an, an address pool that exists already it's in the range 10 to 1 2 1 3 4 200 so it starts at 200 it ends at 210 giving us only 10 IP addresses in your environment you might want to create multiple address address pools and um, bigger than just 10 of course but for our lab this this is just fine for our purpose here so i'm just going to leave this the way it is without making any changes with the predefined bookmarks what i want to do is create a couple of bookmarks dc01 we know that we have our web page for the certificate server so i'm going to type that in here 172.16.25254 So the thing is we want when people connect via the um, web mode uh, VP SSL um, we want for them to be able to see the shortcuts already on the landing page the second one that I want to do is um, our Ubuntu server, which is basically running um, uh, an Apache web server. I'm just going to call this app01. And description app01. So that takes care of this portal. And now when we go to the portal settings, the interface that we're going to be listening on is our INET interface. And we want to listen on, because there's a, there's a, there's a conflict, we're using HTTPS, um, which is um, TCP443, and our VPN is going to be listening on 443 by default. I'm just going to change this to um, triple four three. To resolve that conflict and the server certificate we want to present is a firewall one certificate and we want to allow access from anywhere and when users authenticate uh, via tunnel mode they will automatically get assigned this ip range but when you have a custom object that you've created um, with different ip pools you will click on specify custom ranges and then select it And then now here are the port mappings. This one basically says, this is a cache all. It says all other users would be mapped to some portal. And this one, we're just gonna uh, select the web access one that we didn't touch at all. But for the group that we created, the SR remote group, we want to map those users to SR remote portal. And with that, we're done with our SSL VPN config. The next thing to do is to create security policy. But before we do that, there's something else that I want to do. I need to enable um, multiple interface policies because we have two internal interfaces. We have the DMZ and the LAN. When we write the security policy, we want to be able to reference both at the same time. And we go to firewall policy we just call our policy inbound SSL and of course the in, uh, in, incoming interface will be our SSL interface and outgoing interface would be the DMZ and LAN 30 and the source would be all but we do need to specify the source um, the, the, the remote users that we defined in this case, that will be SR remote. The destination, what we can do and actually what we have to do is define the destinations. I'm just going to create a address object for LAN 30, which is 172.16.30.0/24. We will be using this address object again. And another one for for the DMZ. I'm 
172.16.25.0/24. So the destination would be our DMZ and LAN 30. I'm going to allow all services and click on OK. So while we're here, we also need to specify or create the policy for outbound. And then we say internet access. Incoming interface would be these two interfaces and outgoing interface would be the INET interface. The source would be the DMZ and LAN 30, destination any service any, and we'll be using SNET. Now that, that looks okay to me, and I believe we're done on the FortiGate. Let's go to our Windows Server, uh, window, Windows Client, um, this workstation over here and initiate connection to 172.16.15.2 and we have reachability to the 40 gate and now let's set up our tunnel we configure our VPN I'm gonna call this SR SR and the IP address would be 172.16.15.2 and it is on port 443. Now let's test if we see, let's test to see if we can connect. I just noticed the pop-up come up and this is the certificate saying, do you want to accept the certificate? We say yes. Oh, the, the port is wrong. Um, looks like it didn't change. Click on OK and then let's verify that again. OK, looks like it, it's stuck this time. We want to accept the certificate. And we are connected. We can see the username as Picard. And now let's test the applications this is our domain controller, the certificate services, um, or actually this will take us to the IIS page um, and it doesn't seem like it's coming up. Let's see about the Ubuntu. And we see here that we're not seeing um, a return traffic, so there's an issue with the firewall. And so it does happen sometimes with these images. So what I'm going to do is take a backup of the firewall and then um, just spin up a new firewall and then see what happens. The firewall is now rebooting. All right, it looks like the firewall is back up. And I'm going to go back to the Windows Windows machine, our remote client over here, and then um, re-attempt the SSL connection. And just like that, the web page comes up. And the IIS page also comes up. And now I'm just going to certificate services, administrator, and that works. Maybe the last thing that we can do is disconnect um, our user Picard and now connect uh, using a different username. Let's say Captain Jonathan Archer. And once again, we have connectivity. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. Catch you in the next one.